And our special guest this morning, I think, is completely ace. It's journalist and poker player extraordinaire, Victoria Corrin, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Victoria won half a million pounds and the title European Poker Champion three years ago. The only woman ever to have done so. I think it's a brilliant story. How long have you been playing for? Oh, since the dawn of time. So, but from a very young age. So, I Parts think... Parts in the family. They certainly were in the family, although, although not... Uh, my parents were slightly disapproving of gambling of any kind, but unfortunately they couldn't, couldn't completely control access to my grandparents, who were very keen. <laughs> so. Do you pay tax on that win? No tax. Wow. It is tax. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, That's uh, brilliant. Victoria's gathered some... I mean, they are hilarious anecdotes uh, of her family and their love of cards in this new book. It's called For Richer or Poorer, A Love Affair with Poker. I, I mean, why do so few women play, or is, this, is that a sexist thing for me to say? Maybe there are more women out there. No, I, there are women playing on the internet. You know, if, if you, if you uh, offer a way of playing poker where women can be completely secretly at home on safe territory, they will play. The live game, you know, it all happens at night, it's very combative, you have to travel around a lot and walk through strange dark streets with money. Yeah, I love it, but generally, <laughs> <laughs> generally uh, women... I think it's not for them. Half a million's the most you want. What's the most you've lost? Well, on a night? Yeah. Half a, a couple... million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, probably a couple of thousand. Does that get to you when you're losing? I mean, uh... Well, it has to hurt a bit. I mean, poker is not, you know, it's not like roulette. It's a, it's a game of, of skill and judgement. And if you're playing for sums that don't mean anything to you, you can't play properly. You've got to pitch it. You've got to play for enough money that losing it would hurt so that you concentrate properly, but not so that it would cripple you, because then you're too frightened to play. God, I don't know if I could do it. I, could. I don't know if I, I feel bad enough when I go on the horses. I just yeah. I have suppose, a Catholic guilt about it. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you should give it to the poor. And I, uh, possibly you're now better known for poker than for your writing. Um, although you were writing books very, very young, weren't you? I can remember Wogan you appeared on. I can actually remember. Oh, my can, can we see that? Oh, <laughs> I really, I really, I really <laughs> we tried to find it. Love 16 was the book, wasn't it? And you were what? 15? Yeah, I, when I was a kid, I won a competition <laughs> to write a column in a newspaper. You know, one of those kiddie ones about, ooh, exams, I don't like them. I used to write every week. And then, yeah, they did a book that, that you know, sort of collection of them. And to my eternal shame, I did go on the odd chat show. That was a mistake. In the next life, I won't be doing that. And yet, funnily enough, here I am again. How did that happen? I know. This, Never learn. Uh, my favourite anecdote in the whole book, and I've been laughing about this all morning, you, you, you should best tell it, which is uh, you have a fear of flying mm. and, you, and you sort out professional help. Yes. I mean, I'd like to stress this, when you say it's the funniest thing, funny to you, yeah, well, Yes, perhaps. Yeah, no, I, I, I got a slight fear of flying, and this is, this is no good if you want to play professional poker because you have to travel around a lot, so I thought, well, I'll go and see a, a fear of flying counsellor and get that nipped in the bud. And, unfortunately, he then died in a plane crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, you see, you have to understand... <laughs> to me, that's... <laughs> To me, that's the least funny thing that ever happened. Everybody else always laughs. I, I remember ringing my father, when it happened, ringing my father in such a state of shock, he was on holiday. I rang him and said, this terrible thing has happened. He laughed so much, he dropped the phone in the swimming pool. <laughs> it, but it, was, it was quite scary at the time. It's just a moment when you think, is the entire universe constructed to send me messages? I don't think so, but it did and do you, feel and like do you it. travel OK then on planes now? I didn't fly for a couple of years after that. I thought, well, this is ridiculous. I mean, I, you know, I've seen this guy. The, the only thing... I did the course. He was great. I was over it. The only thing that guy had to do, as far as I was concerned, for the rest of his life, Stay was alive. not die in a plane crash. <laughs> and even I know that most people don't. You know, most people don't die in a plane crash. So for that to happen, I stayed away for a while after that. Now I do fly again, but sort of gripping the seats and taking a lot of Valium. <laughs> Right. It's probably the only way to travel, isn't it? Yeah. And you've had to go at stand-up comedy as well, I'm told, is that right? What is this? this is, I'm just fascinated, because sort of what you can read about people, and because I know that my Wikipedia entry has been, a, uh, has been changed so many times by personal persons unknown, saying that I was rejected for a part in EastEnders as a gay character because I was too light on my feet. I'm always interested <laughs> in what lies or truth they may write about my guests. So, uh, is I it true? I sort of did, yes. When I, in a way, it was a precursor to playing poker. There's, in the book, I never thought about this before, but when I was writing the book, it suddenly struck me. I did, when I first left school, try stand-up comedy for a bit, and what I liked about it wasn't so much writing the jokes, but I liked the fact that at the time, 
Comedy was this sort of secret underground world, these little clubs that you go in the middle of the night, a little circuit of people. You're obsessed with these clubs, isn't it? The clubs yeah, in the middle of the night. Sort of, anything <laughs> subterranean with passwords. I was a big fan of The Secret Seven when I was a kid. So you, anything right. which is a bit like gaining access to a treehouse with a password, I'll do. <laughs> and uh, then, well, then comedy went all of it sort of cool and mainstream. So uh, There's one other career uh, highlight which I haven't mentioned, but one for Eric, uh, which of course is you made a porn film. <laughs> I have done that. That woke you up, didn't it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Eric's been sitting there thinking, where do I know her from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello. So I'd, li I'd like to stress that I didn't appear in this porn that's film. I wrote and directed it. If you recognise me from that, you oh, recognise... Oh, that's fair enough. <laughs> oh, that's... You might recognise the, the sound of me boredly opening a can of Coke behind the lens as a couple sort of go at it on the floor. Yeah, that was, a, that was an experiment with, with my friend Charlie a few years ago. We'd, we'd, we used to write reviews of porn films for a magazine, but it was just funny, you know, we used to watch these films and review them as though they were real films, you know, the characters and the dialogue and plot. And, Heavens to bets. And, and <laughs> watching them... Eric's thinking, what a great job. Than <laughs> <laughs> this. No, it was, but after a while of watching them, it's a bit like, you know, walking around a Turner Prize exhibition. You think, I could do a better job myself. And instead of just irritably thinking that, we thought, let's put that to the test. And we were wrong. We couldn't. <laughs> we made the worst porn film of all time. Which must take so much. I mean, that's a big what competition. What was it called? the title? Of the film, The Naughty Twins. Oh. Um, although... I'll show you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good to have you with us. Uh, good to have you with us as well, folks.